Welcome to BMC's Control-M Application Integrator Job Type Creation video. In this video, you will learn how to create a job type for applications that expose REST APIs. We will use the Clover ETL application as an example. Clover ETL is a Java-based data integration ETL platform, which allows you to transform, migrate, and distribute data into applications. Clover ETL uses environments or containers called sandboxes, and sandboxes contain workflows or data flows called graphs. Graphs are run on user-selected nodes. We want the Clover ETL job type to run a graph, track the status of a graph, and stop a graph from running. To create the job type, we'll use REST API requests and work with the Clover ETL demo server on Amazon. Let's begin. First, we'll click Create Job Type and fill in the name and other information. The default interface type is REST API. For this job type, we need one execution step. We'll call it Run Graph. Next, let's add the REST API URL. We are using the URL from the Clover ETL demo server. We'll need to change the port 80 to a parameter. So we'll open the URL Location Settings dialog and make the change. Since this job type requires authentication, we'll select the Authentication Required checkbox. We'll use the default values for the username and password, which were selected automatically. Now let's save our changes. When you create a REST API job type, by default, four fields are added to the connection profile. For the method field, we'll use the default HTTP method get. As you can see in the demo server, when you execute the request, you see both the request and response formats, which will help us to enter the request and handle the response. Now we'll enter the URL request path to run a graph taken from the Clover ETL documentation. Next, using the designer, we'll create the three job property fields, and then in the URL parameters field, we'll replace the demo values with these job property fields. Note that when you create a job type, a connection profile field is automatically added to the job properties for that job type. First, we'll add the sandbox parameter, entering the parameter name and the field label. We'll keep the field type as text box. We don't need a specific format, so we'll skip the format fields and leave the valid values as all. Now we'll add the remaining two parameters the graph, and node ID. Next, we'll copy the parameter value string from the demo server site and paste it into the URL parameters field. And last, we'll replace the demo values with the Create Job Property fields. First, the Sandbox parameter. Next, the Graph parameter. And then the Node ID. The response for this request is the Graph Run ID. We want to keep it so we can track the status of the graph run. We'll enter an output handling action to extract the run ID. 
Let's fill in the output handling information. We want to keep the default value any response. Extract from body. Content type is just text, the four digits, so we'll select other. For if output line starts with, we'll enter an asterisk. For do, we'll select extract and handle data and keep the default value whole line. We'll select the keep extracted data in runtime parameter checkbox and enter the parameter name run underscore ID. Now we want to add a verify operation to the execution step to look for the end value. There are several values, but we only want the statuses that show the process finished. There are three possible values for that, error, aborted, and finished OK. We'll select the Verify Operation Completion checkbox, which automatically adds the operation to the execution step. Now we'll fill in the details for this sub-step, and we'll add the three output handling actions, one for each possible value. We'll use the same URL as we did in the main execution step. The URL location and the method information is already filled in. We'll enter the URL request path taken from the demo server. Next, we'll enter the URL parameter for run ID. Under output handling, We'll complete the sub-step by entering the three possible values one by one. First, let's enter the error value. We want it to complete and fail. Now, the abort value. Which is also complete and fail. And last, the finished OK value. where we want the step to finish OK. For any other value, this step will continue running and tracking the status. The last part of creating the job type will be to add a command to stop or abort the running of the graph. We'll do this by adding the manual abort operation substep. Again, we'll use the REST1 API that we set up previously. We'll enter the URL request path from the Clover demo server site for the kill graph command. In the URL parameters field, we'll use the run ID parameter as we did in the verify operation completion step. The Clover ETL job type is all set up, and here in the designer window are the four job property fields that we created. We can go one step further and enhance the user experience by adding a button to the sandbox and graph fields. This enables the user to select available sandboxes and graphs from a list. First, let's edit the sandbox parameter settings. We'll change the field type to text box with load button. Next, we'll choose the rest URL as we did in the job type steps. In the URL request path, We'll enter the list command to get a list of sandboxes. On the demo site, you can see the request and response for getting a list of sandboxes. Under Advanced Options, we'll enter how we will extract the data. We'll choose Other as the content type and use the default values for the remaining fields. And now you can see the load button was added to the sandbox job properties field. We'll do the same thing for the graph field. First, we'll open the parameter to make changes. We'll enter almost all the same information as we did for the sandbox parameter, except for a couple of things. We'll change the field type, and then choose the rest URL. For the URL request path, we want to enter the content command to get a list of the contents in the sandbox. To narrow the list down to graphs in the user-selected sandbox, 
from the previous field in the URL Parameters field will enter the Sandbox parameter. To finish, we'll choose Other as the content type as we did for the Sandbox parameter and keep the default values for the remaining fields. Now we see the Load button for the Graph Parameter field as well. We have finished creating the Clover ETL job type. Last, we will click Deploy and select on which agents this job type will be available. Clicking Deploy also saves and verifies the job type. Before using the Clover ETL job type, we will set up a connection profile for the job type in the Control-M Configuration Manager or CCM. In the CCM, we see the Clover ETL job type that we created. Let's right-click it and select Connection Profile Management. Let's click the plus sign to add a connection profile. We'll call this connection profile Clover ETL. Here you can see the fields that we created for the connection profile in the application integrator. Let's fill in the details for the fields. Clover is used both for the username and password. Now we have a connection profile set up that we can choose when using the Clover ETL job type. Last, let's take a look at the job type in the Control-M client. Let's open a blank workspace. In the job palette, you can see the Clover ETL job type that we created. Let's create a new job using this job type. Here in the job properties, we can see the parameter fields that we created in the application integrator. To choose the connection profile, we can click the load button and select the profile that we just created. In the Sandbox field, let's select a Sandbox from the Demo Server site, and then select a graph from that Sandbox. The Node ID is an optional field. We'll leave it empty. Now we'll order the job. Here in the Monitoring domain, we can see that the job has run and is completed. Here's an example of what the job output information would look like for a Clover ETL job. We have completed creating the Clover ETL job type. You can find this job type on the application hub at bmc.com hub. We hope that this video will help guide you in creating integrations to applications that have REST APIs. Thank you for watching this video. 